This week we'll discuss chapter 17, and that is the reproductive system. So these are the topics that we'll be covering in the system. We'll first talk about gametogenesis, and that is the production of gametes, and then sex determination and differentiation with some of the disorders. Um, the second video will be about the male reproductive physiology, and the third video and the topic is about the female reproductive physiology. So let's go ahead and start the first one. Now, gametogenesis is the process of making either sperms, and we'll call that spermatogenesis, or eggs, and we call that oogenesis. So on the top, you can see the steps that lead to the formation of sperms. We start off with a primary spermatocyte that has 46 chromosomes. We'll go through the first meiotic division followed by the second meiotic division. So the primary spermatocyte start, starts the first meiotic division um, where we end up making two secondary spermatocytes. Each one has 23 chromosomes, but they still have two chromatids, so they still have that X shape of a chromosome. Now we have to split that chromosome into two chromatids, and that's what happens in the secondary meiotic division, where we end up making four spermatids. These four spermatids have to mature into these mature, mature sperm cells. The maturation of spermatids into sperm cells is a process known as spermiogenesis. During the first meiotic division, there is a process known as crossing over, where the homologous chromosomes pair up together and they share um, part of the genetic material so that we don't end up as carbon copies of our parents. So spermatogenesis leads to the formation of four sperms. Each sperm has 23 chromosomes with one chromatid. In the process of oogenesis, there is a primary oocyte that again has the 46 chromosomes. Um, it'll go through the first meiotic division with the crossing over as well to make a secondary oocyte and a first polar body. Polar bodies are not going to mature to make anything really of any kind of importance. Um, the significance of, the first, of these polar bodies would be to just get rid of the excess genetic material. Um, so again, your end result of the first meiotic division is a secondary oocyte and a first polar body, and that first polar that polar body is just going to degenerate. Now, the secondary oocyte does not go through a second meiotic division unless it is fertilized. So, and that is why you see that sperm right here. So, the secondary oocyte um, is what is ovulated, and if fertilization doesn't happen it will just go ahead and uh, degenerate without going through second meiotic division. Let us take into um, you know, the scenario what happens if fertilization does occur. If it does, that secondary oocyte will go through the second meiotic division, um, and then the genetic material of the sperm together with the genetic material of the egg will combine together to give you that first cell known as the zygote that is 46 chromosomes. Again, you have a second polar body that is just getting rid of the excess genetic material um, from that secondary oocyte. So your end result of oogenesis is the formation um, of really one egg, okay, while in spermatogenesis, you end up making four sperms. Now, sex determination and gonadal differentiation. Sex is determined by um, the chromosomes. So sex chromosomes are X and Y. Uh, males possess one X and one Y chromosome, while females have two chromosomes, two X chromosomes. And in the presence of the Y chromosome, the Y chromosome has a gene known as the SRY gene. SRY stands for sex determining region of the Y chromosome. If the Y chromosome is there, um, that SRY gene is present, and the following would actually happen during the seventh week of fetal development. And in short, and we'll go through you know the details in a minute, but in short, what happens in the presence of the SRY gene would be that um, the testis is going to develop, that testis will start making um, 
male hormones will start making testosterone and that testosterone will um, lead to the development of the male uh, reproductive parts. So we can see here what happens, uh, the embryonic sex differentiation, whether male or female. So this right here is before seven weeks. So we're looking at a five to six week embryo where we have pretty much the different parts that could develop into a male or a female. So let's try to identify the different parts that we have. We have the blue part and that is known as the gonadal ridge. That gonadal ridge will develop into the, one of the gonads, either an ovary or a testis. The orange part is known as the Wolfian duct. And if the Wolfian duct ends up um, differentiating, that means that this embryo will differentiate in, in, and have the male reproductive parts. That purple line that you see is known as the Mullerian duct. And if that ends up differentiating, that will develop into the female reproductive parts. You could also see a cloaca in the middle, and that ends up making the urinary bladder and other parts of the urinary system. So let us see the scenario in the presence of a Y chromosome. We said that the Y chromosome would have an SRY gene. SRY gene will make that gonadal ridge develop into a testis. That testis will start producing different hormones. One of them is known as the anti-malarian hormone. Anti or anti-malarian hormone is going to lead to the degeneration of the malarian duct. So that is the first step that it does. It wants to get rid of that duct that might have developed into the female reproductive parts. So anti-malarian hormone will make sure that the malarian duct degenerates. Um, other cells in the testis, and those are known as the Leydig cells, are going to produce testosterone. Now, testosterone will stimulate that Wolfian duct to develop into the male part. So you can see here we're starting to make an epididymis, uh, vas deferens, and so on in the seminal vesicles. And um, that cloaca in either male or female will develop into the urinary bladder and the urethra. Now, what happens in the absence of the Y gene? So females have the XX chromosomes. Well, there is no SRY um, gene. So the gonadal ridge will develop into ovaries. Okay, we, um, that will lead to the degeneration of the Wolfian duct. You can see the Wolfian duct degenerating and the malarian duct is going to develop into the female parts. While again, that cloaca is going to develop into the urinary bladder and the urethra. It also helps in making part um, of the vagina, the, especially the lower part. Now, that, this is the summary of the sex differentiation that we just talked about. And here again, you can see in the presence of the Y chromosome, where you have the SRY gene, the primordial gonads are going to differentiate into testicular cells. Those cells are into the testis. That testis has both Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. Sertoli cells make the anti-malarian hormone, and that leads to the degeneration and regression of the malarian duct. Leydig cells produce testosterone, and testosterone changes into dihydrotestosterone. That again is going to lead to the development of the male reproductive parts. So you see that testosterone will stimulate the Wolfian duct to transform into the epididymis, the vas deferens, the seminal vesicles, and the ejaculatory duct, while dihydrotestosterone will help and produce the, um, stimulate the development of the penis, the scrotum, and the prostate. In XX chromosomes, where there is no SRY gene, the primordial gonads are going to develop into ovaries. So really, this that um, malarian duct is going to develop due to the absence of the anti-malarian hormone. So the malarian duct is now able to transform into the uterus, fallopian tubes, and the upper part of the vagina. And due to the absence of testosterone, 
um, the Wolfian duct regener degenerates, and it also allows the development of the outer vagina, which is the lower part, and the female external genitalia. So how I like to think about it is that by default, um, all fetuses would become, develop female parts unless there is that Y chromosome with the gene um, where we have these different hormones. So you see here that in the absence of all of these hormones, um, the malaria duct develops and so on. In the presence of the hormones, that would lead to the regression of the malaria duct. So you have to actively, um, you know, turn that button off to prevent it from um, differentiating into female parts. And the hormones are going to stimulate the development of the male reproductive organs through the uh, differentiation of the Wolfian ducts. Now, a couple of disorders of sexual differentiation. One of them is known as the androgen insensitive syndrome. And before we talk about it, I want to make that distinguish that the to make sure that we understand the difference between a genotype and a phenotype. So genotype is what the chromosomes are telling us. Phenotype is what we are seeing, okay, um, by the naked eye, whether it's internal organs or external organs. Um, so genotypically, androgen insensitive syndrome, genotypically are males. There's the XY chromosomes um, with a testis that is secreting androgen. So what is the problem here? The problem is that these individuals have a mutation where the androgen receptors are not responding to androgen. So the testes have been developed, they're making androgens, they're making male hormones, but the organs cannot respond to it because the receptors are irresponsive. And again, that is due to a genetic mutation. So um, phenotypically, Okay, they develop on the inside as females and even maybe on the outside as well. Because again, without the response, without the hormone and being able to respond to these male hormones, these different organs are by default going to become female parts. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, that's a little bit different. So genotypically are females, XX, but there's a gene mutation where um, the enzymes in the cortisol pathway makes it hard to make female hormones. So I'm going to go um, to the next slide and explain this. So if you guys remember um, from the endocrine system, we talked about how sex hormones all start as a cholesterol, and then there are different kinds of enzymes where we can end up making testosterone. And testosterone can be very easily changed into estrogens through that enzyme known as aromatase enzyme. So in congenital adrenal hyperplasia, there is um, lack of that aromatase enzyme. So instead of being able to produce estrogens, well, now that all of that cholesterol is going to actually start to make more and more testosterone because again, um, the lack of that aromatase enzyme. So the genetic mutation for that enzyme that is found in the pathway where the adrenal cortex will shift and produce too much androgen as opposed to making some um, estrogen as well. So phenotypically they are males or ambiguous where it is hard to tell. What are the stages in the control of the reproductive function? So in fetal life all the way through infancy, surprisingly enough that the gonadotropin releasing hormones and gonadotropin, which are FSH and LH, are both high, whether in males or females, um, while the gonadal sex hormones are would be high in males, okay, are secreted at relatively higher levels. And then it stops. So through childhood all the way to the onset of puberty, gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus and the gonadotropins from the anterior pituitary and the gonadal sex hormones, those are all very low until puberty hits and through adulthood, 
you have these higher levels and um, especially in females where they go in cyclical variations in order to make produce the menstrual cycle. And this is the time of fertility. And then as we age, the reproductive function gradually decreases, where in females, it pretty much st totally stops entirely um, at the age during menopause, while in males, it can decrease a little bit. And it was found recently that some males actually um, reproduction totally stops and that is known as andropause. So although it is not part of the normal aging process in males, but it was found that some males do actually go through andropause, which is kind of like the male version of menopause. Now the next video will talk about the uh, male reproductive tract.